giving me this time to give you. The word, how many know the word is necessary? The word is necessary for us. We are word people. Amen. We can say this out, but it's still word people. Amen. Amen. Because when we, when we understand the value of it and the power of it, then you'll be the first one to receive it. Yes. Amen. That's a great word. So I'm just trying to make sure when she gets ready, I get eyes on her. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, put your hands together.
still didn't have a message for today. I know I was scheduled to, to speak today. So I sat down at the computer because God said, I'm not going to give you the word. So I sat down at the computer and he said, just begin typing what you hear. So <laughs> this is what God said to, to me and he's saying it to us. Uh, God says it's time. And that's the subject for today if you were to give this message a title. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> uh, if I get talking, God said, it's time to get to work. Don't you hear me? Don't you hear my voice? <laughs> and he, my children. <laughs> oh, it's Ah, uh, I have much in store for you and your children and your children's children. Uh, it's time I called you, says the Lord. God says it's time for us to get to work. Like this. 
Anxiety on the heart of man causes a question. Uh huh. Question. Are you feeling depressed? My God. If so, ask yourself, what have I been thinking about? Oh, shut up. God says, time to be free. Uh, from the worries, because they're only distractions. They're only hindrances. They serve no purpose. God also says to us today that it's time to be free from strife. Strife. What is that? Angry or bitter disagreement. For instance, Maybe you're having an ongoing battle with family or with a particular family member. And this ongoing battle, this ongoing fight, this strife, it keeps you off focus. Yeah. It weighs you down. Like worry, it weighs you down. It causes you to say things, to do things that are not of God. Sometimes, depending on the situation, it makes you doubt who you are as a child of God. Perhaps you have a family member or family members who don't want to accept that you've changed. Uh-huh. The scripture says that you may be in Christ as a new creature. You are new. Yeah. But they keep reminding you of the old. They want you to respect the man of God you are now, the woman of God you are now. Right. And sometimes, You ask yourself, maybe they're wrong. Ah, oh, 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 I Maybe I haven't changed. <coughs> or maybe I can't change. Please turn to Mark chapter 6, verse 4. Mark chapter 6, verse 4. Again, God is saying to us today, it is time. God. Hello, grace and peace, Mr. Lydia. Hallelujah. Mark 6, verse 4. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. Jesus himself, our Lord and our Savior, he could go to any town, any city, and people would sit and listen to him. They would respect him, they would honor him. As they listened to him talk, as they watched him cast out demons and heal the sick and those with diseases. But when it came to his hometown of Nazareth, people were hesitant. Isn't that the carpenter's son? Uh-huh. We were around when he was a little boy. What is, what is he doing? I'm not listening to him. Huh. A prophet, a man of God, a woman of God, a believer in Christ, seems to be honored by everyone except by their own family. Those who think they know them. But no one knows us like God. Man was on the outward appearance, but God was at the heart. So God said, it's time to let go of that. If that applies to you. Stop trying to prove yourself. Stop trying to convince them. If they don't see it, then that's their issue. Be free. Now, understand that being free doesn't always mean you have to distance yourself. Sometimes being free may mean just changing how you respond, how you react, how you deal with people, how you talk to them. I'll give you an example, and I hesitate to share this because I don't want to give the wrong impression of my father. But, but we, you know, we all, we're all human, we all make mistakes, right? Especially when we're not, not in God. This was like back in 2000. I had to come to a decision to change how I responded to my father. See, my father, he he he's he has a gift for sarcasm. Uh-huh. He can just, you know, say some stuff. And I need to be very sensitive. Well, now anyone who knows me knows that I'm not argumentative. Mm-hmm. You know, I I I mean, I, I, I believe in discussing a situation if there's a disagreement, but I don't believe in shouting at you. Right. I, I'm not doing that. You're not going to holler at me. Right. 
I'm walking away. When you calm down, you can talk. Um, and so my dad, he was going for getting loud. And so one day, I hung up the phone with him. I don't even can't remember what the, what the crime was. It was something stupid. But I hung up the phone. I was crying. Thank you. 
things through Christ. Yes. Yes. It's time to be quick and end of strength. There are some things that you know you need to do, but you keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Stop talking yourself out of it, out of what you know you need to do. Out of what you know you're supposed to do. Make the decision and stick to it. Get all the very go round. Get off. And move on. Woo! Please turn to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. God is saying to us today, it is time. There's work for you to do. Yeah. But you got to be free. So I can use you. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. That's, that's in the past. That's old. That was last year. Uh-huh. Move on. God's like, I don't care anymore. Okay. You realize this thing God he doesn't care anymore. I know because he tells me that. Let that go. I'll move on from that. Praise God. Why are you going back there? Because you're not going to find something to do. Get busy then. Oh my God. The old stuff, the, the old mistakes, the things people said. Mm, Shando, Rabba, Shiana, old relationships with you. No, it's in the past, let it go. Yeah. Verse 19, behold, I will do a new thing. Behold, listen, listen, listen. Sando, listen. God says, I will do a new thing, but you got to forget the old. I'm ready to give it to you. I'm ready to show you. I'm ready to speak these things to you. But you got to get that clutter out of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. I will do another thing. When you let that, that stuff go, that junk go, I will give you a new thing. Now it shall sprinkle. Whoop, shun. It's not going to come slowly. Spring, spring means move or jump suddenly or rapidly, upward or forward. So shall you not know it? Do you not realize what I'm about to do for you? Do you not realize that I've moved on? I don't care about that. I forgave you. I healed you. I delivered you. I moved on. I need you to move on with me. Says God. I will, I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. If you make a decision right now, I'm done. God will, today God will, God will make a way in that wilderness and that chaos that is currently going on in your life and your house. God will make a way. He will make rivers in that desert. If you just make a decision right now, God says, let it go. We've been hearing that this morning, have we not? Uh-huh. Let it go. You can't hear my voice, God says, because it's drowned out by your thoughts. It's drowned out by the voices of others who are not speaking for me. God says, stop listening to people who are not speaking for me. When they say you, you know it doesn't run in the course, so why are you entertaining? But they're telling you, I didn't tell you that in your in your prayer closet. So why are you listening to Jesus? Stop imitating some people because you don't want to hurt their feelings. Like I gave you an example of my father. He's my father. You know, he helped bring me into the world. But I said, I have to make a call. If the man he got his little feelings hurt, then so be it. But I have to take care of this. I have to take care of this. God says, you're entertaining thoughts, ideas that I did not present to you. Think about this. If we're focusing 
on ideas, thoughts that God did not give us? And when do we have time to hear his thoughts? When do we have time to hear his ideas? When do we have time to hear his plans? God says it's time to let go of the people who mean you no good. Now, now, these, now, these people we're talking about are people that you really do have to distance yourself. There's some people that you do have to distance yourself. You have to just let out several times. They're only hindering. And in some cases, you think they're helping them. But you're not helping them. In fact, they don't want to be helped. Because if they did, they would have done something different right now. With all the advice you're giving them, all the hours you're still on the phone, and they're still in the same place, and it's wearing you down. You know why? God says some folks are just not your assignment. Even family. Sometimes you just make the mistake of thinking because we're blood related. And I gotta just, you know, I gotta just endure all this, all this nonsense, all this foolishness. You know, you says it. God says, even again, some loved ones are not yours. Yes, you love them, so keep praying for them. Yes. Keep living the life before them. Yes. But God says, I cannot tell you to preach to them. To keep them over here with the Bible every time you see them. Because they are not listening to you. No. Oh, you got that, huh, Jason? See, sometimes. We could be too close to the situation <laughs> that instead of ministering, instead of being led by the Holy Spirit, we're, we're talking about talking to them out of our emotions. Yeah. That's how you see my father. Yeah, you need to be saved. I don't you want to know. And he's just looking at me like, and God says, stop. I got him. Stop stressing yourself out. God said, give them to me. And watch me work. Watch me work once you get out of the way. I had to tell one of my uh, dear cousins, and I have many cousins, so you're not going to know who he is. In fact, his cousin lives out of town, so now you really don't know who he is. One day, his cousin and I, we were talking, and Oh, she was just stressing like, and I said, you need to mind your own business and stay in your own lane. She worried about all these other family members. But, but if, if, you know, I, I'm afraid that if, if, if I pull back, you know, they'll, they'll stop talking to each other and we'll just fall apart. Mm. I said, no, you have to give it to God and trust him. Amen. And he was back in her house. It was nothing with her heart, to be more specific. Oh yeah. I said, while we were on the phone one day, and she was like, oh my God, oh my God. Oh. I, calm down. Calm down. Let it go. You have your own family. You have your own home. You have your own issues. God is not asking you to take on all this pressure. And I thank God that she took heed to what God was saying. Amen. And now she's kind of like, look, I have to, I'm just concerned about me and my family right now. I said, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But again, God said, you got to get out of the way. Watch me work. You have to trust me and step aside. Huh? God says, you're in the way because you're trying to do something I did not instruct you to do. That's why it's not working. That's why you're always stressing. Because you're doing something I did not tell you to do. When God, when God instructs you to do something, he's going to be right there to carry it through it. But when we're out of his will, who's carrying us? He didn't tell us to do that. God says, be about my business and I will be about yours. Take care of my children, God says, and I will take care of yours. I think that's a pretty good deal. Right? Contract, huh? Amen. That way we're trying to do it. Well, give him to me, God says. Give her to me, God says. 
I'm about to already anyway. Trust me and watch me move on their behalf. Please turn to Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Again, today God is saying it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. And he says, then say he unto his disciples, this of course is Jesus talking. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Labor is just another word for worker. God says, it's time to be a worker. There are people who need you. This is for everyone sitting here. Or who may be watching online. There are people who need you. Is this a recording? Okay. People I have assigned to you. People who need to hear your voice, your word, your story, your testimony. Oh, yes. Yes. You. Oh, yes. God says you got it. It's already in you. Each of us, we already have a story. Regardless of what our title may be, we all have a story, a testimony of what God has done for us. And if you just share that, we find with the people God sends your way. Ain't no telling what impact it will make. God says you got it already in you. You're ready. Yes, there are times for preparation. But, but listen to this. This is for someone. God says, how long are you going to prepare? Some of you are just preparing to prepare. You're getting ready to get ready. You're getting ready to get ready. Does that even make sense? <laughs> like sitting on the couch, you know you gotta go to work. Okay. I'm gonna get up to get ready right now. Okay, five more minutes. Then I'm gonna get ready. Okay, okay. What, another five minutes? Five more minutes. I'm gonna get ready. You still sitting on the couch? No, I'm gonna get ready. I'll talk no action. Now you may say, but you want to be joy, I'm just not ready yet. Huh? But you're not even getting ready. You're not even getting ready. You're not praying. Or praying enough. You're not studying God's word. Or studying God's word enough. Listen to this. God said you do not have to have a title. Like a, an ordained minister. And we praise God for our, our gifts. In the ministry, right? Yeah. Our, our pastors, our prophets, our apostles. But you don't have to be that to tell someone about my love. No. No right. To tell someone about my gift of salvation. Jesus wants all of us to do that. Yeah. And you feel that each of us is. Yeah. There are more gifts than just standing up here and teaching and preaching. Think about the skills, the gifts, the talents, the knack that you just have that just comes natural for you. God gave that to you. Uh-huh. I'll prove it. First Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. You don't have to turn there. I'm going to read the New Living Translation. It says, God has given each of you, each of you sitting in here right now, this is for you, each of you from his great variety of spiritual gifts. God says, use them well to serve one another. Yeah. He's giving you gifts to help somebody else. Verse 11 is an example. Do you have to get to speaking? Obviously, I have to get to speaking. There are others in here who have to get to speaking. But you know what? The God says that as though, then speak as though God himself was speaking through you. Another example. Do you have to get the helping of us? There are people in here who have that kid. They just, they're just always ready to help. Like, I love Sister Mildred, but I would not let her throw away my play pants for that. <laughs> and even at the comedy show, she's going to throw away my track. Sister Mildred, you're off tonight. But that's her. That's why she's just usher. Because she just, she just, she loves helping. Huh? So do you, do you have to get to helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. That everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. 
All glory and power to him forever. See, when we use our gifts to serve others, we bring glory to God. In other words, we help to point the way to God. We show God's love. We show God's kindness. We show God's mercy by using our gifts to help somebody else. All right, everyone stop for a second. Please stand up. Everyone, please stand up. Put your hands together. Give God a thunder of praise. Anything you 
you were there. You got enough to do because he chose you. He didn't give up on you because he chose you. He didn't see you allowing things to happen to get your attention because he chose you. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain, that you should go and tell others about me. That you should go and use those gifts I've given you to serve others. Fulfill the purpose I placed inside of you. God said it. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. You don't have to worry. About anything, God is going to take care of us again. If we take care of his business, he will take care of ours. Again, Jesus chose you. Are you going to choose him? And we're not talking about accepting his gift of salvation. Yes, that's the first thing you must do, of course. But it's more than that. It's more than just about being saved. It's about doing what he's called you to do. God called each of us to do a work. That dream that you have, well, that is God's purpose in your life. Huh? And he wants that hope it come to pass. He wants it to come to pass in your life, but you gotta let go of the clutter. Let go of the worries, the strife, the sin. Oh, la 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 la. You gotta let it go. I remember the late Miles Monroe. He had once written in a book that a lot of dreams, or most dreams, I don't say most dreams, or a lot of dreams are in the cemetery. Because people die without fulfillment. And God says that doesn't have to be your story. All it takes is making a decision. Huh. Again, God says, I chose you. I chose you for a special one. Whatever that is, seek my face with the instructions. <laughs> Even those of us who already know what we've been called to do, we still have to seek his face. Because he orders our steps. Step by step, we go from one level to the next level to the next level. Like everything that I desire to do or to have, no, I don't believe it's going to happen in 2023. That is too much. Because it's a lot. But as long as I keep my eyes and stay on Him, then I will accomplish exactly what I'm supposed to accomplish this year. And then when 2024 comes, I continue to move forward. So again, God says, keep my face for the instructions. And then God said this to me, because let's be honest, because I've done it, we, some of us hesitate to say yes, because we don't want to maybe let go of some things, or we don't want to get uncomfortable. But God says, okay, but haven't I earned your yes? Has he earned it? Has he not shown his grace and mercy? Has he not protected us when some of us should be the end? <laughs> so is there really, so should we really continue to hesitate? <laughs> Will you say yes to that? Yes. If there's anyone who desires prayer, you're ready to say yes, you're ready to let go. Of whatever it is that you know, you know what it is that weighs you down, that weighs down your mind. Because it's way so heavy on your mind, you, you can't hear God like you need to. You can't see God like you need to see him. Sometimes we think we're supposed to work, and I'm saying that from personal experience. I don't know about my family, man, or my children, but, but you know, I mean, I just, I just love so much. Mm. I just, 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 I just,
I just love him so much. That's I heard. I just love him so much. God said baloney. And yeah, that's what he said. He said, yeah, tell him I said that. I said baloney. That's foolish that's nonsense. You can't love them without losing sleep at night over them. Because you already prayed, you already interceded, you already gave them to me. I need your mind clear. I need your heart clear. So you can hear me and do what I need you to do in this season. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. My God. So is there anyone? Or maybe you need prayer for something else. Can everyone please stand with me? Yes, hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Hallelujah. Because you may not want to come up. Even though there's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> but even if you decide not to come up. Thank you. Hallelujah. You can release it to him. From where you're sitting. Hallelujah. Yes, let's begin worshiping him. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, you're great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. There's no one like you, God. You are the only true God. You are the only living God. Jesus, you are Alpha and Omega, oh, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Jesus, you are a wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus, you are the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus, you are the Ruin of David. <laughs> Jesus, you are the living Word, the bread of life. Jesus, you're the author and finisher of our faith. The Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And we honor you right now in this place. <laughs> ah, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory, 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 glory. to her right now, God. Suzette, oh, you know what it is, Suzette. Just let it go. 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 Let it go.
elevates and moves when he chooses. And we've all witnessed that. And how you minister and how you glory and with how and how you can really take you through where only he can. So today is that day. I want you to lift your hands. And so you realize that there's no way deep in that. And there's more authority and power that's coming come from the inside of you. When, when you're with his hands, the Lord, the Lord is working. Already working. And, and tonight, there's a reason. I don't want you to speak a word of life over other people, so you don't mind me speaking. for sure that you hear God. So Father, I thank you for that relationship and her level of trust in from her because she first had to trust you. Yet nevertheless, God, you are trust. So Father, now in the name of Jesus, we the most shot. Let those gifts become stronger now. In Jesus' name. Somebody help me give God praise. For development, through processing, spending some time with God. Amen. If something only comes when you spend your time with your God. Amen. Because she said it a very powerful thing, but I want to I want to let folks know. See, one thing about God, you don't have to try to prove yourself. Alright. Once you're proved by God, he'll prove you. Yes, he will. Himself. Thank you for that ministry today. Come back and have a good one in such a way. I want to do a couple of things I'm going to get them out of the way and we want to uh, take up duty for another offer. But that, there was, there's a couple people that I've been placed in my heart. The ministry. First of all, I give God a hand for this great man. He came in for the first carrying the pain, walking on the pain. And God healed him in this place. Amen. And he's king free. Amen. Amen. So they walk around like he owned this place. You know, that like this style. Amen. When God does something for you, you got to receive it and believe it. Amen. He's worthy of all things. Uh, there's, uh, my daughter's in the house. I'm so excited. I want to speak to her. Amen. You know, she just does it. You know what I'm talking about. You right there. You right there. You look around, she's like, you know. Amen. I'm going to wait on you since December. I don't know if you were scared of the media. I thought it was God. I've been doing great things in your life. It's always exciting to see you. I want you to stand right there. Glory to God. And I'm, and I'm going to say something to you. I'm going to be very bold. I'm going to be able to offer some things for you. And uh, you, are you ready? Come up here. You can. Put it by hand to raise. How many of y'all was moving last night? How you many know, you know, you know, came strong last night? It really did. His presence. Amen. Always good to see that. Come on, man. I go, yeah, I'm talking to you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. How have you been doing? I'm so excited to see you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I need to come with that. You need to go to France or something like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sister, went out of the country. Man, all this. It's going to be international and stuff. I'm going to bow the good for you.
come to faith from a lot of ways. That's, that's it. Uh, because you carry so many things and you bless this house. God from the day that you came from this house. Hallelujah. I can't imagine. <laughs> you know, the Bible says he's a warrior of them that good and gentle. Yeah. And she does it so quiet. But you're going to make some noise this week. You're going to make a lot of noise this week. I'm going to make some noise within you and your house. Oh, 